What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of JT Daniels' throwing mechanics from Georgia, okay? So we're going to be looking at some of his best throws from this past season. It's uh, one of his throws from this past season that he uh, missed on. He missed a little bit behind the receiver. We're going to be talking about um, what kind of differentiates that throw from these two great throws that he makes and just kind of how you guys should move in the pocket, how quick your drive's trigger needs to be when you're throwing this ball. So I hope this video gives you some value. But first things first, I want to talk about a QB throwing mechanics manual that we just started offering on my website. So it's a 40 minute minute video of everything quarterback mechanics you guys need to know to improve your hip drive, hip and shoulder dissociation, your base, your stroke, everything that you guys need to know when it comes down to your throwing motion. It's 40 minutes of a technical breakdown. We break down NFL quarterbacks and we give you specific drills to work on. Check out that very first link in the description, fellas, if you guys want to check that out. Again, a 40-minute quarterback mechanics, just Bible, um, video, manual, whatever you guys want to call it for you guys to improve your game. Let's get started with this breakdown. Again, link in the description if you want to get access to that video. So first things first here, we're going to be looking at this kind of throw. Let's watch it full speed. We're going to be talking about his hip drive and how he's doing a really great job on this type of a throw, transferring weight and obviously giving his guy a chance to make this throw. So we're going to be comparing this throw with the next throw here where he he kind of misses behind this receiver, and we're going to be talking about why he misses behind and what the differences are between this throw and then the second throw, okay? So I think this is going to help you guys a lot. I know a lot of you want me to um, kind of necessarily break down like bad film. I don't like doing that because um, – I don't like being that guy that sits back and critiques people who are actually doing it, but I think it'll give you guys some value just in terms of just one of these bad throws and one of the things that he could do to get a little bit better at it, right? So let's get started with this. So again, we took a look at this throw. When he gets his front foot down, he kind of tends to have a little bit maybe longer of a stride than you see than most, but still the stride like length necessarily isn't the important thing. It's about the sequence, right? So as long as when you get your front foot down, your front shoulder is closed and you're separating your hips and your shoulders. Because the goal is for the hips to be able to drive the football through because that's how you create torque and that front hand almost like pulls back to your chest, right? Because that's how you guys get more velocity. That's how you guys get more of a twitchy motion or a snappy motion as some people like to call it. And that's really the main thing, right? It's more about the timing of the foot strike than the length of the foot strike. But obviously length kind of ties into timing. So you obviously don't want to be have this long stride like a pitcher, but you don't want to have a quick foot strike and you're spreading open your chest. You want to be able to have that front foot down and have that front foot loaded on the target right or that front shoulder loaded on the target right because now you see how he's able to rotate through and transfer that weight to that front leg that's the main key here if you guys are here and you guys are driving to that front leg and that's why you see him push so well off of his back leg because he's transferring that weight he's shifting that weight from his back leg to his front leg you guys want to be lighter on your front leg heavier on your back leg because you want to have about that like 60 70 percent of that weight on your back leg and be able to transfer it to the front leg to be able to allow your hips to come through and to help you rotate externally right so you see how he's pushing off that leg. That's what creates that weight transfer. You see how he does that little kind of like Aaron Rodgers almost pop step on that front leg. That's what they call it. They call it a pop step. Now that pop step, what that does is all that does is allow your front hip to come through, right? Because a lot of people will strike that ground and they're so heavy with that front leg, but they don't have any weight transfer and their weight's constantly fading back, right? And they're constantly fighting this motion. And the only way they're going to be able to rotate through is by swinging their head and shoulders out of there. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about in the next clip as to why he misses behind that receiver, right? So letting your hip be able to bring that football through is a great thing that you guys can do. I think this is something that you saw him do a lot. Like at, at SC, you never really saw him necessarily do that kind of like pop step, that kind of off platform throw that you see or that weight transfer because that weight transfer, again, allows your hips to come through. That's what you want to really focus on. And that's what a lot of people do. A lot of people say weight transfer. They don't know the reason behind weight transfer because when you could transfer weight to that front leg, you see how when he's driving off this back leg, he's turning that ground force into rotational force. And he turns this back foot almost pivoting it which allows his hips to rotate through, keeps that hand nice and disciplined to his front side, and that hip, those hips are coming through before that football. That's the goal because that's how we're going to be able to create torque. That's how we're going to be able to get velocity, and that's how we're going to be able to drive this thing. And that's a great job by Daniels. Again, throwing a nice, accurate shot that gives his guy a chance. Let's watch this thing again full speed, right? Turning that ground force into rotational force. Make sure we're transferring that weight to allow my hips to be able to rotate through, okay? So now, again, like I was saying, we're going to be looking at this throw where he missed behind. Now, quarterbacks, if you guys have been watching this page, you know this, that when you guys tend to miss left or right, right, you miss too far in front of a receiver, you miss too far behind a receiver, you're usually pulling your front side because, again, your body is split down a midline. So, like, let's say your front elbow goes down, your release is going to get pushed high. Let's say your shoulders open up and you lean out of the throw this way, your release is going to fly and you're going to be coming almost across your frame, right? Now, obviously, Daniels has got a smooth motion. 
So this is not going to be as um, like glorified or exemplified as somebody who maybe doesn't have the smoothest stroke. But you guys who don't maybe necessarily aren't as comfortable with the motion yet, and you guys tend to miss left to right, you miss behind receivers a lot, you miss on this type of a throw like a little bubble screen behind. This is something that you're probably going to see a lot of. You're really going to see your arm fly if you do this. This is slight, but we're going to talk about why. So you see how when he goes here, when he gets that front foot down, front foot's down, shoulders closed, but he doesn't turn this. And it's very hard to think about this during a game, obviously. Obviously, this is something that you think about during practice and when you're trying to get better. But um, you see how with this back leg here that that back leg kind of trails behind. Like it almost kind of comes up rather than coming through. That's the thing you want to guys, you guys want to be able to stay connected to this grass and be able to drive that leg through. This is why when guys ask me like, should I drag my leg or should I pick my leg up? I always say drag because you want to stay connected to the grass. The grass is your power source. That's how you're able to drive. But the second you guys let that leg trail behind, like you push off of that leg, but you don't turn it into rotational force, right? Like you push, you're trying to transfer weight, but you, and you do transfer weight. He does effectively transfer weight to this leg, but he doesn't turn it into rotational force. Force, what happens is that leg's going to come out of the grass, it kicks way behind and it trails, so what happens is your shoulders end up coming through before your hips. Your shoulders go here and you see how his kind of elbow is leading him, right? That leg is trailing behind, elbow and shoulders are getting ahead of himself, that's going to cause that pull. That's going to cause that pull out of there with that front side and your weight's going to go this way and we're going to be off balance. We don't have that back leg connected to the grass. I'm not externally rotating my hips. I'm trying to transfer weight but my back leg is trailing behind. So your back hip is trailing behind and when your shoulders get ahead of your hips because the sequence should be front stride then hips, then shoulders, then ball. Right? That's the sequence. But when you go front stride, then shoulders, then ball and then the hip trails behind, that's when you're going to have some inconsistencies because we're going to be a shoulder thrower, not necessarily a hip thrower right and then you see because that leg swings out and around you see how much weight he has on this leg because he's leaning out of there because the only way he's able to get this ball through is by swinging his upper half because he doesn't have hip drive you see how his arm kind of comes across his frame and when his arm comes across the frame where's the ball going to miss it's going to miss behind because you see where his hips and his shoulders are angled they're angled behind the receiver right so that's the key you guys want to be able to stick especially on quick game bubble screen whatever where accuracy is super important you guys want to stay connected to that grass, be able to drive and be able to bring that back leg through and be able to stay square to this thing, not having to pull out of there. But the second you don't rotate those hips, the second you just push and your leg trails behind, because that's a big problem that you see with a lot of quarterbacks, you're going to be a shoulder thrower because you're a rotational athlete. You're going to rotate one way or the other, and it's either going to be with your hips or it's going to be with your shoulders. And when it's with your shoulders, that's when the inconsistencies could happen because he very easily could have been here. Shoulders could be coming through first, but he could have been pulling this hand down. He does a great job of keeping that hand hand by his face, but let's say he swings his elbow down, he probably would have missed high on this thing because he's relying on his shoulders, not necessarily his hips. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. So again, being here, missing behind this guy, just a little bit too early with his shoulders, which brings this thing behind, okay? So now we're going to be talking about this off-platform throw, kind of, not necessarily off-platform, but his pocket movement throw. And this is like where you see like NFL tight pocket moving. This is how NFL guys move in the pocket and how they have this stroke, how they take this ball back. This is very, very fluid, and this is the goal that you quarterbacks should be trying to get to in the pocket, and let's talk about it. So you see when he's here, he's dropping back very relaxed with that ball, and you see how quick that trigger is. It's just out of his hands, right? That's the goal. That's the key, because that's how early you have to get the ball out at the next level. If you're making that high school jump to college, or that college jump to obviously where Daniels is trying to play, which is in the league, it's those windows get smaller and smaller and smaller. If you're a fresh guy in high school and you want to go play varsity and you're trying to jump up and play varsity, those windows get smaller. It's just the, the speed of the game, right? So you can't, you don't have time to load up with this ball. Bring the ball up to the shelf, as everybody likes to call it, or bring it up to your ear, or load up and get weight on that leg. You have to be preloaded. Your base has to be so good that, and you see how when Daniels is moving in the pocket, this is a misconception that everybody likes to say. They like to say, oh, you want to move with your back foot first because it's quicker. It's like, that's bullshit because you're going to have to go right leg, left leg, then drive off the right, then take a step with your left. So that's four total steps, right? But you see when he moves, he goes left leg first. You see how his left leg's moving, but his right leg's trailing closely behind so he can just hit the right leg and drive. You see how it's here. It's one two, three, and it's out. So he hits, goes left, right, stride, the ball's out of his hands. That's how quick it has to be, and you see how quick his trigger is. Right when he hits that right leg, that activates the motion. His front foot's down, he's in that backstroke nice and easy where he's got that shoulder, hip and shoulder dissociation where his hips are rotating him through. You see how he's able to transfer weight. Look at how well he's able to get weight to that front leg. He's transferring that weight, takes almost that pop step. You see how much his hips are rotating through now, and you see the difference between the last throw. You see how his hips 
are coming through before this ball. And then when you guys have a disciplined hand right here, you stay square with your shoulders, stay square with your hips. It's wherever you let that wrist flick go. We can be real consistent with that wrist flick. This is a perfect position to be in at the throwing position, right? This is like at release point, I mean. That's what I'm trying to say. That's a perfect position to be in. And it all starts with being able to always have that back leg loaded. When you're moving in the pocket, whether you're moving up, whether you're moving lateral, whether you're moving back, you want to be light on that front leg so when you hit that right leg, you can have that weight transfer. And you see he hits that back leg, he drives, he gets the weight to that front leg, he turns it over into rotational force, he's opening up that front hip, stays nice and tight with that front hand, and he's got that clean release point. That's what we want to do. Anytime we're moving in the pocket, it's all about cutting out wasted steps, wasted motion, getting the ball out quick, and not loading up back there in the pocket. That's a great job by Daniels. Very fluid back there. Let's watch the thing again, full speed, left, right, ball's out. That common misconception, you got to always move with your back leg first. It's incorrect. You move with your front leg first, light on your front leg, back leg is heavier so you can transfer weight and be able to effectively rotate through with your hips. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, leave those in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And also, guys, if you want a QB throwing mechanics manual 40 minutes of qb drills techniques we break down some film and how it ties into all the drills that we talk about check out that very first link in the description hope to get you guys on that soon i'll see you guys next time